We do indeed, our ballet. Thanks so much for that. We're joined now by the Foreign Minister of Pakistan. Your Excellency, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Um, we're here live at the COP27. A lot of commitments and talks that you've been having over the last 24 hours. But before I get to that, I have to ask you, your former Prime Minister Imran Khan, he is accusing your government, essentially, of going after him. Is that true? Can you give us any guidance on what your response might be? Because at this point, this is a man who's saying you're shooting at him no, to kill. As, uh, as far as uh, Mr. Khan is concerned, um, a few days ago now, there was a firing incident uh, at a political protest that he was leading, uh, in, where, in which he was injured, a couple of other people was injured, and unfortunately, uh, a, 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 a political worker was killed. So I'd like to start by unequivocally uh, condemning uh, this act of political violence. Uh, as I'm sure you're aware, uh, I myself, my family, uh, have experienced uh, political violence. I lost my mother uh, to a suicide attack uh, in Pakistan in 2007. Uh, before that, both my uncles uh, were assassinated, one poisoned, uh, one shot. My grandfather, who was the first prime minister and president of Pakistan, uh, was democratically elected I mean so uh, it was also uh, assassinated so there's, there's sort of no ifs and buts here we absolutely and unequivocally uh, condemn this attack and we'd like uh, a free fair and impartial investigation uh, the Prime Minister has already announced I think a judicial uh, commission made up of uh, the judiciary to investigate this attack as far as Mr. Khan's political accusations are concerned I don't think it's appropriate uh, for me to respond uh, politically. I think it's important uh, for all sides to have an impartial inquiry uh, into the incident. So you support that independent inquiry into exactly what's happened. And just by, by definition, this was an attempted assassination, not a firing incident, yes? Uh, I mean, sure. Firing, att attempted assassination, absolutely. I mean, a, a gunshot was fired. And you support the independent investigation into Yes, not only me, the entire government. I mean, we've announced an independent judicial inquiry into the incident. Let's talk about why we're here on the ground as well. Of course, COP27 well underway now. What's in it for Pakistan, the country really being used as an example here, as one that really feels the impact of climate change and doesn't necessarily cause it? So as far as um, COP27 is concerned, particularly from Pakistan's perspective and particularly uh, from a developing country's perspective, uh, COP27 has been incredibly important for us. Uh, from, uh, we sort of discovered firsthand through the catastrophic uh, apocalyptic flooding uh, that we experienced earlier this year and we're still dealing uh, with the consequences of that, that not only um, sort of is, the, is such an event of this scale uh, not have any uh, international financial mechanism available uh, for us to be able to address a tragedy of this scale, uh, but given the difficult economic uh, climate, uh, this has really become a compounding uh, tragedy. I think COP27 uh, has been a success so far in this sense that finally, after I think it's ever since COP13, this has been uh, an attempt that has not been successful, which is to add loss and damage uh, onto the agenda in addition to uh, sort of mitigation and adaptation. And I'd just like to sort of compliment uh, my team as Pakistan is head of the uh, group of 77 uh, plus China uh, played a pivotal role in creating the important and necessary consensus to get that onto the agenda. So that's incredibly important. Uh, we can't deny that loss and damage doesn't exist. I mean, I had a third of my country uh, underwater uh, that will prove otherwise. Uh, I don't uh, necessarily want to pitch this as um, sort of liability uh, or compensation, but it's just... Reparations. A f it, or reparations or something uh, that is stream. I, I really just said that, look, this loss and damage happens. Let's work together uh, on ways and means and how to address this. This can be private sector uh, investment. This could be uh, debt swap and other sort of uh, support. But we must all come together to find ways to come up with interna even international uh, mechanisms, international financial institutions 
so that you know, Pakistan today is affected by this and suddenly discovered there's no way to address something of this scale. And this is not going to stop in Pakistan. The next country this? that's affected yeah. should have something available so that they can address uh, the loss and something damage. Something available to them, but something that doesn't also leave them literally awash in debt. Sorry? Something that's available but doesn't leave them literally awash in debt. Absolutely. Absolutely. Or at least help address the issue that whenever we're addressed, whenever we're confronted with uh, a climate catastrophe, we first drown in the floods, then we have to drown in debt to be able to finance uh, the reconstruction and rehabilitation. Phase. You and I last spoke just as the floods hit Pakistan, and I know the entire world has seen those images of devastation. The country has really been suffering, so our thoughts are with you. But Thank you. Do you know what the total damage bill looks like today and how much money you're actually going to need? To okay, so as far as the total damage is concerned, um, the approximation is $30 billion. Uh, that is sort of astronomical as far as uh, Pakistan is concerned. Uh, I don't expect us to be able to put together that much money for reconstruction and rehabilitation, certainly not in the form uh, of grants and aid. But I do uh, hope to be able to provide uh, public-private partnership opportunities for investment in renewable energy infrastructure. We have to go uh, and conduct that transition. I do expect to be able to uh, work with international financial institutions such as the World Bank and others on reconstruction of people's homes that have been destroyed, on solarizing those homes, on upgrading those homes, on greening our infrastructure. Uh, but uh, we are also cognizant of the difficult economic climate. The COVID pandemic has left everybody in a uh, difficult economic way the war in Ukraine has affected everybody uh, so we have to sort of calibrate our expectations of that and rise to the challenge by coming up with these sorts of out-of-the-box solutions Indeed. Foreign Minister we really appreciate your time thanks for joining us thank today. you thank Here you for having me